Mr. Please. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Up front, uh, in your executive summary for your report, you all call out the damage delayed budgets and continuing resolutions due to our national security, which we all agree. Um, an example of the CR that covered the beginning of fiscal year 23 cost DOD nearly $18 billion, according to the American Enterprise Institute. And uh, the average delay in appropriations being enacted is now over four months. I don't know what that figure is going to be. To help address that, you've called the creation of a common modern business system, common modern business system, to better communication information inside the department and to Congress. So my question is, putting it mildly, the department struggles to do anything that requires that level of coordination. For over the past, that's what we based on the past experiences. Who exactly do you see in the department successfully leading this effort? This is for all the panel, anybody can Yeah, there have um, been some steps. CAPE and Comptroller are now working together in one system, and we see um, a demand signal from senior leadership to try to have data move around. I think Laura probably has some specific examples um, of pockets. Maybe, of maybe I can. I don't want to set you all up with this question I've well, got coming up. No, this is this is even more. In 2005, the uh, chief management officer was created. You all paid no attention. It never took hold. No one supported it. No one supported it. Nothing happened. Okay, they got rid of it. We put it back again. You all don't, I mean, I'm just telling you, I don't know who makes these decisions, but I can tell you they don't want it. They don't want that oversight. I know what you're saying. It sounds good. And you would think a, a, a Department of Defense, being as large as it is, would want oversight to make sure we're spending and, and, and doing that. So I would lead into another. The mili military industrial complex, which is what Dwight Eisenhower warned us against. Every bit of that, every bit of these companies that basically are we're beholding to for our, for our military might, if you will, have retired, high-ranking retired military officials in their ranks, every one of them. Some of them are basically controlling the direction it's going. Do they have more power than basically the defense department has itself? Or are they basically the tail wagging the dog? Mr. Hill, you've been there, and I know you've seen it up inside out and every other way you can. This is a tough one because something's wrong, sir, when you only have the Marines. John McCain and I, way back, God bless John, we wanted to audit the Department of Defense. It's the only agency we have in federal government that's never been audited. And to this date, 20 years or 14 years later, only the Marines. So I don't know how we break through this, but I can tell you it keeps ringing in my ears. Dwight Eisenhower saying, beware of the military industrial complex. And I am very much aware. So go at it. Well, I certainly hear your concerns. It is not an area where we focused uh, in the commission. <clears throat> we were looking for ways uh, to take whatever level of monies uh, Congress and the president agree on and spend it in a, in a manner that helps us uh, keep pace or outpace China and other, uh, and other strategic competitors. Um, I understand your concerns. Uh, Let me ask they, you this question. They were not a focus of this commission. You only have two people that I understand. Two positions in the department that have the authority to make the change would be the secretary and the deputy secretary <clears throat> for what you're talking about. Uh, and to be frank, they both already have more on their plates than they can handle. That's why we created the, general, <laughs> the chief management officer, and you all don't want it. <clears throat> well, you wouldn't uh, accept it. You didn't integrate it. And nobody wanted it. I, I, I think that's is that accurate? Clearly, the department asked uh, that it be eliminated. So I think you're right there. We are not uh, part of DOD so now, though we certainly have been. You understand that what basically what so, you're saying but, right but, now and identifying is kind of far for us to take it serious because you already had a position that could have done it. They just never weren't given authority. But to I do will it. say well, I this, think this deputy secretary has taken uh, this commission seriously. She's been very helpful. She directed implementing a number of our recommendations in our August interim report. Um, and when we pre-briefed her on this, uh, she expressed uh, uh, support uh, for the commission and its goals. So I think it is on her plate. Okay. Uh, we'll, call, we'll call her in, find out. Say again? Call them in, find out. Secretary Lord, you have something to say? Yeah, I believe that potentially we're conflating a couple issues okay. here. 
Um, DOD is a very large, complex well, we organization, and when we add new departments, it makes it more complex. So there's an Who's issue. Who's adding new departments? Why do you add more departments when you can't really oversee the ones you already have? I'm addressing your CMO question, and that's the very point I'm making. Okay. When you add another group, it adds to the bureaucracy. So in my mind... Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You're saying by having an oversight CMO, a management officer is adding to the bureaucracy? They're supposed to be overseeing the bureaucracy so it doesn't get more bureaucratic? We have checkers on checkers on checkers on checkers well, on checkers. No one's reporting on the checkers, I can tell you that, because we can't get an audit out of y'all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Manchin. Sen